Welcome to the Avoiding Plagiarism tutorial. Plagiarism may be a new and confusing idea for you as you study here at Edmonds Community College. This resource will help you learn what plagiarism is and what kinds of mistakes in your schoolwork are considered plagiarism. At the end, you can test your knowledge by taking the quiz. Plagiarism is an important concept in American academic culture. It is critical for you to understand how it affects your education. So what is plagiarism? According to the Longman Dictionary of American English, plagiarism is the act of using someone else's words, idea, or work and pretending they are your own. The idea behind plagiarism is based on the belief that an individual or organization owns the work they create. A work could be an image, a quote, a book, a song, a film, or even an idea. An author's work is their voice and they own it. When we speak of plagiarism in an academic setting, we often think about it in terms of the projects, presentations, and papers we turn in for our classes. In these academic assignments, such as an essay we write for an English class, we may choose to use the ideas and works of the authors we are studying or reviewing. How do we use an author's ideas and work? When we find an author's work that we want to use, we then decide how we want to use it. For example, we may want to use the author's exact words to define a specific term or concept, summarize what the author is saying to help our readers understand their main ideas in our paper, paraphrase or explain an author's idea in our own words and use it to support an argument we're making in our paper, or use an image to add graphics to our presentation. As you will see in the following examples, mistakes leading to plagiarism can happen with any of these approaches. Plagiarism happens when you copy an author's words or ideas without using quotation marks or without creating a citation to give credit to the author. Use the words of an author's work too closely when paraphrasing, even if you create a citation to give credit to the author. Use an image, chart, graph, or photograph without creating a citation to give credit to the author. Turn in a paper written by someone else or an old paper that you wrote for another class. So what is a citation? A citation is a very specific way to include information about each source that you use in your paper. The layout of each citation is based on rules called citation styles. Different areas of study have different citation styles that they use. The most common citation styles you may be asked to use are the MLA, APA, and CSE. Citations occur at the end of your paper on a references or works cited page and in the body of your paper as in-text citations. The examples below are citations for a book a works cited citation you would include on a works cited page, and an in-text citation. These are formatted in the MLA or Modern Language Association style. The first example is a works cited citation format. The entry begins with the author's last name, Garland, followed by a comma, followed by the author's first name, Sherry, followed by a period. Next is the title of the work in italics, Shadow of the Dragon, followed by a period. This is followed by the name of the publisher, Harcourt, followed by a comma, and lastly, the publication date, 1993, followed by a period. When you reference this work in your paper, you would include an in-text citation. The second example shows an in-text citation format. Here, a quotation from the book, Danny felt the heat creeping up his neck, is followed in parentheses by the author's last name, Garland, then the page number, 77, followed by a period. To recap, a citation gives credit to the author who created the information and tells the reader where the information can be found. So here is a situation for you to evaluate. 
Is this plagiarism? Students are putting together a PowerPoint presentation on business etiquette in Japan for a project in their BizTech 110 class. On the opening slide, they want to include a photograph that shows how people greet each other in a business meeting. They go to Google Images and search on Business Greeting Japan. They like the first image, so they copy it and they paste it into their PowerPoint presentation. They do not cite it because they think it is not necessary since they found it on Google and it is a picture, not text. Is this plagiarism? Yes, this is plagiarism. Any work you use in your paper or presentation that was created by someone else must be cited. This includes images found on Google or any other source. Remember, a work or creation, such as an image, a journal article, or an idea, is anything produced by someone and belongs to that individual who created it. So you may be wondering, can I use any image I find on Google as long as I cite it? Google is a search engine. When you search for something, it brings together images by many authors, but this does not mean that everything you see is free to use. You will find images that may be protected by copyright, which means you may need permission from the authors to use them. Read the terms of use for any image you find on Google or any other website. Copyright can be a confusing topic, so please ask a librarian or your instructor if you have questions. Why does plagiarism matter? If you use the Longman Dictionary of American English definition of plagiarism, the act of using someone else's words, idea, or work and pretending they are your own, you can understand why plagiarism is considered to be lying, stealing, and cheating and can lead to serious trouble. Under the Edmonds Community College Student Code of Conduct Policies, Section 3.82, plagiarism is considered an act of academic dishonesty and may result in disciplinary actions. These are negative consequences that include not receiving credit for the assignment, not receiving credit for the course, having to meet with college authorities who may decide that you have to leave Edmonds Community College temporarily or forever based on the policies of the college, so while it may be tempting to plagiarize when you don't have time or are not sure what to write, when you plagiarize, you are cheating yourself. You are not gaining knowledge and you are denying yourself the experience of developing and expressing your own ideas and opinions, which create your academic voice. So here is another situation for you to evaluate. Is this plagiarism? A student is writing a paper on how animal-assisted therapy helps children with autism. She finds an article in an academic journal which gives a perfect description of the features of autism. She decides to copy and paste the sentences into her paper. Her first thought is to put quotation marks around it, and that way she can use it word for word. But then she remembered that she had received feedback from her instructor that she has too many direct quotes and that she needs to use her own words throughout the paper. So she decides to change some of the words, such as she'll take out core and replace it with main. Instead of saying in the school environment, she'll just say in school. And instead of listing all these different things that may happen, she will just say often to struggle and to engage with their classmates. She'll also add an in-text citation. Is this plagiarism? Yes, it is plagiarism. Although the student provided an in-text citation, she did not paraphrase the author's ideas. Changing, replacing, or deleting a word or group of words in a sentence that was created by someone else is still considered plagiarism. 
To avoid plagiarism, there are two things the student needed to do in this scenario. One, paraphrase the author's original sentence or idea. If an author's sentence or idea is used without quotation marks, the student must paraphrase by writing her own interpretation of what she believes the author is saying. Two, provide an in-text citation. By providing a citation, the student gives credit to the author whose idea she is using in her paper. Most students may not mean to plagiarize, but using another person's work without listing them as the source is considered plagiarism. The best way to avoid plagiarism is to create citations for each source of information whenever you paraphrase, summarize, or take exact information from someone else's work. The only exception to citing sources is if the information you are using is common knowledge. So what is common knowledge? Common knowledge refers to facts that are well known and can be found in many sources. For example, Facebook is a social media network. Edmonds Community College is located in Linwood, Washington. Citations are not required for facts like these that are well known. Common knowledge can be a tricky idea. So if you are not sure if something is common knowledge, ask your instructor or a librarian. Remember, it is always safest to cite something if you are unsure. If you don't, it could be plagiarism. The Edmonds Community College Library has guides for MLA, APA, and CSE styles. If you need help using these or any other style, ask a librarian for help. So here are some tips for avoiding plagiarism. As you read the sources, take notes in your own words and keep your notes separate from the sources. Never copy and paste. Keep track of your sources as you find them and as you go through your writing process. Manage your time so that you are not pressured to plagiarize your work. Learning how to avoid plagiarism is an important part of college and a skill you will need throughout your personal and professional life. The librarians at Edmonds Community College Library are here to support you on this journey. If you have any questions, ask a librarian for help. You can visit us on the third floor of Linwood Hall or give us a call at 425-640-1472. Our website is edcc.edu forward slash library. Now it is time to take the plagiarism quiz. You can access the quiz through the resource guide or through the link provided by your instructor. Note, you must be logged in to your EDCC student Edmill account to take the quiz.